This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with three-time world champion Amanda Lawrence. Just 12 days out from Sheffield, the biggest meet in powerlifting history, let me tell you, Miss Amanda Ann is fired up. She is ready to put up legendary numbers at Sheffield and remind everyone who the queen of powerlifting is. I can't wait for you to hear this one, but before I bring Amanda in, make sure you don't miss Sheffield. Tickets are still available. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com, become a member, check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for PA merch, and be sure to follow us on Instagram. Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay, now let's get to this quick check in with Amanda Lawrence. I'm here with the queen, three time world champion, Amanda Lawrence. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. What's up, champ? How are you oh, doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. We are training hard right now for Sheffield. Super pumped. Um, yeah. Leaving next week. Can't believe it already. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, we're 12 days out from the day today. For Sheffield. When you say um, it in days, it's like, whoa. <laughs> I know. It's We're happening. less less than two weeks. I mean, it's crazy. It's finally happening. I mean, this has been a, a long time coming because you were invited to the first Sheffield, um, which yep. was back in 2020, which we all missed out on because of COVID. Um, but I mean, what does this mean to you going into the Sheffield? How excited are you for this for this event? I mean, I can't even put into words. Like I've been anticipating this day since basically 2019. And, yeah. um, you know, I was just talking to someone yesterday and I mean, in tw for 2020 Sheffield, that meet was canceled like two weeks out. So it would have been almost at this like exact point in the prep. So like, yeah. I don't know, feelings are like kind of coming back. Like, you know, we're, we're at like, we have one more hard week of training and then and that's it. We're leaving. And it's just kind of surreal. I, yeah. I don't know if it's truly going to hit me till I'm on that stage. Um, but it's going to be different than, than anything I've ever done. Um, you know, we're all competing on one stage, one session, yeah. the best in the world. It's, and, and everything's high stakes. So, mm -hmm. you know, we got to be hitting all our lifts and putting in the right attempts. And I'm very confident in where my training is at this point. Yeah. And just, you know, being a veteran lifter, um, yeah. with what I'll be able to do at this meet. So. <laughs> it's so exciting it's so exciting like you said i mean it's basically like the most stacked session you will ever see in powerlifting it's all the world champs plus some uh, of yeah. the best lifters in the world um and it's just it's going to be amazing i mean and it's all going to be crammed into like a quick you know, what maybe three hour three to four hour session and then with tons of great media hype around it you know i've heard stories that there's going to be all kinds of interviews and obviously the production value is going to be like nothing we've ever seen before um, how are you feeling about the stage itself? I mean, it's, it's a big stage, like figuratively the whole world will be watching, which you've seen that before you've been at worlds and stuff, but literally the stage is like a stage in a theater, uh, yep. with like, you know, the type of seating all around and everything. Yeah, how are you high. feeling about that? Um, you know, I've been to some like pretty big venues before, but this is going to be different. I think it's going to be, I mean, like you said, everyone's surrounding you and I'm sure there's going to be yeah crazy sound effects in there so uh, and lights cool. and like in the lights cameras. yeah it'll be I, i'm sure it'll be like more of uh, uh i don't i don't more maybe like an arnold vibe with the dark darker lights maybe i don't know where I'm the lights like, will be on I'm the stage kind of, exactly exactly yeah. and the audience would maybe be darker yeah yeah so it'll be it'll be different than like you know the world championships and um i don't yeah. know that, that kind of like arnold kind of like darker kind of vibe is that's kind of like my my thing so i'm excited for that it'll it's going to be a crazy production and, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know that first spot is going to be nervous going out there, but you know, after you get that first one, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> I think that's how it is. Even like at a local meet, like, you know, uh, it doesn't even matter like how big the stage is, but yeah, just getting used to seeing like, it's going to, you're going to feel like a rock star. Like, cause I mean, like I, I've been on stage as a photographer a few times, like photographing like rappers and stuff like this. And when you're looking out, when they have those lights on the stage, like you said, you don't really see, you can't, it's hard to see what's going on in the crowd. Oh, it's all can. dark. Yeah. And only when they turn the house lights up back out onto the crowd, do you get to see like, Holy shit, this place is packed. It's like, it's great. <laughs> every now and then there's like a flash of light and you see like, Oh my God, like all the way to the rafters, this place is full. Um, yeah. So you're going to, I think it's amazing that um, SBD is doing this in a way where they're taking the best of the best athletes in powerlifting and putting them on a stage and making them into like rock stars, you know? Yeah. 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 I was right. telling, uh, I was telling SBD, like, maybe we should do like a, 
like a concert kind of half show kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Halftime show. Like have Rihanna come out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In between squat and bench, like uh, she does, yeah. comes out, does one song or one little medley of 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah, that would be amazing. I love it. Oh, <laughs> uh, for sure. I mean, like uh, my wife was watching the Oscars yesterday and I kind of got roped into watching it a little bit. And the whole time I was just thinking like the way that the theater uh, is set up and stuff. I'm like, this is how Sheffield's going to be, you know, it's like, so, I mean, I'm putting you on a pedestal up there with like rock stars and movie stars and stuff like that. So I think, you know, hats off to SBD for doing that. That's what we need in the sport. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is, so, this is going to be huge. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, who all is going with you over there to Sheffield? Are you taking your whole family and everything? Is Calvin going? Yeah. Calvin's going, he's going to be in the back coaching. So awesome. yeah, he's, he's been to most of my meets. And then of course, uh, Mama Kelly, she's going, she's <laughs> been number one supporter on my meet. So, um, that's like my, uh, I guess family that's going with, mm -hmm. um, obviously the whole flex fam is going, we have five of us athletes total going. So there's, uh, Jesus, Delaney, Keiko, myself and Mikey. So, Mikey, yeah. um, we, we have, we have, you know, there's 24 lifters invited. We, we have a good chunk from, from flex showing up. And so, all Absolutely. the coaches are going, uh, we're bringing the squad, we're bringing the heat. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. We're going we're gonna to see some big numbers being put up. Like, honestly, like, I just like keep thinking like, it's going to be crazy. Like, I mean, it's cool in itself, just like having all the women competing all at once, you know, Yeah. every single weight class, but like being on a stage where like, Hey, Zeus is like squatting over a thousand, yeah. going over nine, like the same session, like yeah i don't even know what to say <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and who knows like what someone like taylor atwood might do and like all the other crazy things like the 93 battle you oh know? yeah I oh mean, yeah all three of them it's like well, I, don't, I don't know what to expect like i i wish i was honestly like watching this meet like i'm gonna have yeah. to like stream it afterwards like the night of so i can just go through the emotions again and see you know <laughs> oh of course well <laughs> do don't worry <laughs> we're gonna be posting it all over social media i mean uh it's gonna be on youtube i believe is that right yeah on svd is uh YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be there for the whole world to watch again and again and again. We'll hopefully run it up and get it like millions of views and everything. Um, so it's, it's super, that's just, it's amazing to think about that. Um, and then yep. you mentioned you guys have five flex. We got nine power up team America athletes over there, um, yep. <clears throat> out of 24. So team USA is coming in in full force. Are you guys going to be wearing team USA singlets or is there like a secret uh policy on singlets are they breaking out anything new or something uh i don't know if i'm supposed to say what okay don't say yet. anything don't say anything don't uh, say anything. i don't know <laughs> I, I didn't even okay i i don't even have my, my meat kit yet i think i'm picking okay. it up in the uk but I, okay. I, I i don't know if i'm supposed to say that but it'll be cool <laughs> okay 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 we won't say anything about that we'll leave it uh some things up to a surprise but um it's super cool that you know so many of team usa lifters are going to be there um, so many flex lifters, so many familiar faces and stuff like that. And you're right. You, you normally like at a nationals, you might be in the same session as Jesus, but at worlds, you're typically not, you know, you're just with same the 84. Flight. You're, you know what I mean? Same, yeah. same, same time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> same session even. I mean, you in, in like a, a nationals, you might, you might be like in the same session, but yeah, over at, in worlds, you're not for sure. Cause I just watched your whole session, um, from worlds. You were just 84s and 84 pluses and that was it. Yep. And so, I think yeah. it was, I think nationals. I mean, gosh, this was already two, two years. I think you had to ago. go in the morning, morning and then I was morning yeah. and then afternoon. That's usually how it goes. Even with world, exactly. So, yeah. so this will be yeah. different for you. Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, it's usually, it's usually just, I don't know. Women's only, I think, or yeah, exactly. I don't know. Exactly. It's, it's different every me. I've done so many. I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So how are you feeling? We'll get into some specifics on training and stuff like this, get into some specific numbers. And of course I'll ask you questions, but feel free to not answer or give vague answers. So you're not revealing too much of, of your hand as far as a uh, strategy involved in everything going into Sheffield, but overall, how are you feeling? Like, like, are, are you banged up right now? I mean, you're, you're, you're 13 days out or whatever, 12 days out. So I'm sure you must be, you know, a little bit banged up because this is the, the tough time of prep, but how are you feeling physically going into this? I mean, I'll just say I'm feeling stronger than I ever have going into a meet. And we have one more week of really, really strong training coming up. Um, I don't know if you saw, I posted, what was it? A week and a half ago, I posted the world. I, I took the world a pound less than the world record deadlift and I smoked it. Yeah. So that absolutely. doesn't give you any ideas what I'm pulling. Then I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> and I may, and I may or may have not tripled the world record squat last week. So there's that. 
Okay. Uh, I think we're, we're going to see a strong week coming up. So I'm feeling as confident as ever. Um, bench technique is dialed in. We're not going to see any misses for uh, my hips coming off again. That just like, I was just kicking myself at the last world championships mm -hmm. for that. Just, uh, you know, being a veteran lifter like myself, I shouldn't be, I mean, shouldn't be missing on like small mistakes like that. So mm -hmm. definitely learned uh, my lesson there, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I mean, obviously going into a meet these last few weeks, this is, we're pushing our bodies to the limit. I mean, I'm not like hurt by any means, but maybe some days I'm sore, but I mean, that's mm -hmm. everybody, you know, as mm -hmm. an athlete. So um yes. i'm uh i'm in the best shape that i've been in a few years uh you know i some of my meat performances in the last couple of years may have not been as as high as maybe my 2020 meet that i did in wisconsin um mm -hmm. but i had a nagging hip injury finally it's it is healed up i can confidently say that and um i feels good saying that i mean this, this kind of sport, you know, there's injuries that happen. We just got to work through them. And, you know, sometimes you may have to take a step back, but overall we're going to keep pushing forward. So um, when we're healthy, so yeah, but yeah, feeling good. I'm really excited. Um, I'm definitely going to be putting up a lifetime kind of meet coming up. So um, yeah, that's, that's what you're going to expect. I mean, I'm you're, <laughs> these people, these, these girls, it's not gonna it's not gonna come easy then when I'm there healthy. So there's that, <laughs> you know? Um, oh my god, you are dropping sound bite after sound bite. I love it. <laughs> um I, that was amazing. Um it, I'm so happy to hear this, you know, because I know what you've been going through in the past, like dealing with nagging injuries and still having the weight of the world, you know, expectations and stuff like this. And then you're constantly pushing because there's always another national championship and another world championship to go to. Um, Jonathan Kaiko was talking about this, you know, about how just going from meet to meet to meet to meet and how difficult that is on your body, especially like at your level, when you're pushing the world record at every, you know, almost every single kind of competition that yeah. you're in, that's very difficult to do. It's very hard to sustain it. Ultimately injuries kind of catch up with everyone. And, um, it's just really happy to hear that, like you're hundred percent and, uh, wow, I can't wait to see, like, this is going to be so exciting to see what you put up. So oh, thank you. no pressure. <laughs> I'm right. I'm like writing down the quotes. It's not going to be easy for these girls when Amanda Lawrence is at a hundred percent. I love that. Oh, yeah. kind of talk. I mean, honestly, like I get tired of hearing like, you know, the doubts over these years. It's like, yeah. I haven't gone anywhere. I mean, I've just been, I mean, mm -hmm. kind of like even what Taylor says, it's hard to beat when he's a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It really is true. I mean, when I'm hurt, I'm just giving these, I guess these other girls chances to try to catch up. So, um, that's, that's just my thoughts. I mean, I, I've still been here. I mean, I'm still, I still, even when I was hurt was putting up bigger numbers, you know, that we yeah. haven't seen before. So, I mean, Absolutely. You're I mean, still pushing. Crazy. Yeah. Even injured, you're pushing like 570 dots and stuff like way up into the into these numbers. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it's it's awesome. Do you feel like this year since worlds, um, and even maybe going into worlds, you know, like maybe coming off of PA Nats last year, that people are kind of sleeping on you a little bit, like people aren't um g g hyping you up as much. Like there's a lot of talk about, you know, like the 76s, and um, there's a lot of talk about the 57s. And there's a lot of talk out there, you know, even like the 47s and stuff. And no one's talking really about the 84s as much anymore. So, so here's the thing. People want to see head-to-head -head battles. Mm -hmm. As of right now, I mean, I don't, I don't have that right now in the 84s, right? Yeah. So there's that. I mean, the only thing like I can do is keep pushing the world records and putting up basically legendary numbers, which we're going to be seeing coming up here. But I mean... Ugh. That I mean, yeah, I I think I was a bit under hype because of that, like I said, because that's what that's what people like thrive. They want to see head to head battles. They want to see, yeah. um, you know, t tight competitions like yeah. you know, like 2019 Worlds, for example. I mean, that video, uh, Danny versus me, 2019 Worlds. I mean, that has almost seven million videos right there. But yeah, um, yeah, and and I've done both, right? I mean if someone wants to come up and just try to challenge me right now, like by all means, like I, I, I thrive in that kind of environment. It pushes me even more. I mean, not yeah. saying I'm comfortable right now, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, I'm just trying to go for the overall title uh, last couple of years, I think. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but that, that doesn't stop me from, you know, yeah. still putting out the, the best I can. So. 
I love this. You're, you, I lo- you dropped so many sound bites already. Um, you said, just said <laughs> legendary numbers. <laughs> it's absolutely true. You've already yeah. done more than a lot of people do in their whole lifetime in the sport um, in terms of putting up legendary numbers, like the legend of Amanda Lawrence, Miss Amanda Ann. Will, <laughs> will, I mean, if you quit and retire today, like there, you will always go down in the history books as a legend in the sport, you know, one of oh. the greatest, the greatest of all time, but you're only 25, right? Or, or how old are you now? I am. I am. And I feel I like mean, I just started powerlifting. Like yeah. I was, I started well, Okay. So I started back in 2016, but my first, uh, I guess, international meet was 2019. So yeah, really, I mean, I wouldn't even be half satisfied with retiring at this point. I, I, I think I have maybe a little more proved to, to, to maybe sit up there with maybe like Kimberly Walford's Walford sort of thing. But yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. I'm young still. So I love I just, it. I just aged out of juniors not long ago. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, basically last year. I mean, you're only 25 now. I mean, the future is really bright. You've got a super positive attitude. Um, training's going great. Everything's really looking up right now for you. So um, I think 2023 is just gonna be a huge year for you. So um, that's really, really exciting stuff, Amanda. And I'm, I couldn't be happier for you. Let's talk about some specific numbers here. Oh, we got a dog in the background. I love it. Sitting down oh, in the window. Chloe there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chloe like is a cat. Yeah, that's Chloe. Yeah. She's a, she's a, she's a Morky. Yeah, <laughs> that's where yeah. she said she's like, she likes looking out. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. My dog sit up on the couch like that too. Um, <laughs> Okay. So let's talk about a couple specific numbers here. Um, the world record total. So Sheffield for people that don't know, it's scored based on the, how big of a percentage you break the world record by. And the world record total right now is yours. It's 636. You've done 646 before at a local meet. So, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say, like, given that you said your training is on point, you know, we'll go into each lift a little bit, but I think it's pretty safe to say that 636 is not going to be the world record in 12 days after, you know, 12 days from now. Yeah. 636 and a half. I think it is. Right. I think yeah, I was yeah. doing my calculations right. Yeah. No, I mean, we're yeah, going to blow that up. Half, yeah. I mean, we're, we're shooting for a 650 plus. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. Like I said, <laughs> we're going to be putting up a lifetime performance sort of thing. And if, uh, if that's not enough to win, then I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, like, okay, so I, well, just as of recently had the highest IPF good look points of all time. And it was, you know, it was, mm-hmm. it was recently broken by a uh, Leah Bois. It was by, I mean, it was minuscule amount. Like we're, t- I think it was like by 0.1, like, uh huh. I mean that, that, that meet where I scored, um, you know, I totaled 646 and, and had that amount of points. I mean, that was just a fun meet for me. Right. I mean, yeah. we, we yeah. weren't even necessarily pushing. It was a local meet. I mean, mm-hmm. and sometimes people like to degrade that kind of performance because it was a local meet, but I, I mean, I, I drove five hours over to Wisconsin and I had yeah. a rough weight cut for that meet. Like, I'm not trying to like, I'm not yes. trying like, it, it's not, you know, it's not always uh it's not always easy. It looks as it is, you know? Yes. Um, but and that was yeah, back I, in 2020. And that was back. Yep. You did that. You did that two years ago. Leah just did that like last week at Euros, right? Um, uh, at, at Arnold, UK Arnold. Arnold. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. UK Arnold. Yeah, exactly. I'm a strong so. lifter. And it, you know, um, I've just, I mean, you just haven't seen the last of me is all, is all I'm going to say. Oh, like, of I course. Mean, that's just not <laughs> like, like, I don't know, that number's going down like next, like in a couple of weeks here. So. Um, yeah, so 12 days, I mean, 12 days. Yeah. So, I mean, granted, granted, I mean, this meet isn't scored off of a coefficient. It's not scored off of IPF Gullick points. I yeah. mean, it's different. It's not, that's how, you know, other meets are scored the world championships, how you win the overall title. This meet, yeah. like you said, is scored off of breaking the world record by the highest percentage. So, um, you know, it might make, it might make it a little bit tougher for me for compared to maybe other classes that haven't been push these other years maybe it's a little bit easier for them to break the world record total um but like i said uh i'm feeling really strong right now um regardless i still i still have the potential to win so um i wouldn't bet against me if uh if you know what i'm saying oh i'm putting all my money on amanda lawrence but um (laughs) <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're right though. I mean, there's certainly some weight classes out there where like even new weight classes, like the 69 is kind of a new weight class. And like you said, um, there, there are some weight classes out there where the world record total is just a little bit lower. Whereas you, you know, in back in, in that, that epic battle with Danny, 
and everything, you know, you've been pushing the world record up time after time after time. Since so then, yeah, exactly. you've been pushing and, it. and winning and winning best overall lifter since then. Like I have, yeah. I, you know, I had the high, high, you know, highest points, two, well, two out of three world championships. So it's just like, yeah. I mean, it's, that's just not a factor for this meet and it's just, it is what it is going to have to deal with mm -hmm. it and bring the strongest package possible. And if I hit a lifetime kind of meet and just legendary numbers, and if I somehow, you know, <laughs> have somehow have the highest points of this meet and still somehow fall short for winning overall title for how it's yeah. being scored. Like, I don't, I don't know how to fight that, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I think I know how is that you show up to worlds in Malta and just like obliterate everyone once again and win best lifter and, and then run it back at Sheffield next year. And we'll see if the scoring is different next time. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I it's, I just have to, you know, take it how it is and we'll, we'll see what the future holds, but yeah, yeah. that's, that's that's just crazy thinking like Malta is like, is it like eight weeks after Sheffield or something um, like that? Like it's not a large turnaround time, but it's not long. Um, it's a similar turnaround. It's I think you might have around two weeks more than you had last year from PA okay. Nats um, because I think it's a little further into June and you're and then Sheffield's like a week early or something like that. So yeah, it'll be basically be a similar turnaround as last year. Maybe a little bit. I think you get an extra couple of weeks. Yeah, it's competing season though. We've had we've had some good time off, so exactly. I, mean, I haven't competed since well June last year. So, um, but I, I I like a good off season, but that just like allows me to um you know really try to bring my numbers up, not just constantly peaking meet after meet. And I think we're gonna see that work show here March twenty fifth. Yeah, so <clears throat> let's talk then about the squat. Um, you're you got the world record there as well, two forty three point five. You've yep. also, you've done a 256 before in competition, which yep. is, well, you know, unofficially, uh, you know, quite a bit above the world record. I yep. saw you, like you said, <clears throat> I saw you take 240, which is just a hair under your world record squat for a double recently. Um, you yep. mentioned already on this podcast that you might've taken 243 for a triple. I don't know. No one has uh, evidence <laughs> except for you and Joey. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, that world record is going to be blown up. I mean, it's just a matter of by how much, right? I mean, yeah. we just got to be smart with our attempts um, without mm -hmm. like going into like game plan sort of thing, but you want to gain the most you possibly can while hitting, while hitting, you know, three for three in squats. So exactly yep. hitting, getting white lights um, because this will be refereed by IPF, you know, cat one referees, which are very strict. Yep. So it's yep. a little, and there will be travel involved for, for most of the athletes. I mean, some, some are coming from, you know, in country, but, um, so it's a little, it's a little different than, you know, just, uh, like, like you said before, like going to like a local meet in your home gym or something, but still, um, in that double, uh, the second rep, like looked like a freaking opener, um, that I saw it was two forty for, for a double. And the second rep was, looked like a freaking opener. So that, the second one was easier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, like I said, squats <clears throat> are feeling strong. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> it's a good feeling, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, cause like, I'm not even gonna lie. A couple of years ago, like I was in a bad spot with my hip. Like I would, yeah. like, there was points in time, like in training where I would descend and that's all I'd get. Cause like, mm -hmm. it was just, I mean, I tore my, I, I had my, my labrum was partially torn from okay. my hip. So, I mean, it was just, it was a, it was a bugger to, uh, to try to heal, but it is. And, you know, when I'm healthy, I, and I, you know, I'm able to keep stacking the training sessions one after the yeah. next, I yeah. mean, strength just shoots up. So. Are you doing, what did you do different? I mean, did you, um, I know there was a, a time when you were kind of going back and forth between flats and heels and stuff like this. Like, did you end up kind of making a final decision on that or do you still do both? Uh, yeah. So, um, more so the thing that like, hold up your internet just for s pause for one second here. Your internet is going out for a second there. It's back. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so more than anything, other than like, so I've always been strong and flat, right? Um, and I've always thought, okay, low bar were the strongest, but flats, low bar was just killing my hip. So that's why I kind of moved over to heel at the time. Not quite as strong in heels, but still, you know, numbers are up there. I'm telling okay. you a happy medium, and the biggest change okay. has been squat. And I don't know if you can tell, I squat mid bar now in all okay. my sections. So it's, it's just, it's just enough to like keep my hip happy 
it's like basically what was happening was like my my pelvis was hitting the top of my femur um okay with low bar and flats so and that's what kind of like tore the front of my labrum i mean it was a small tear i think it was like what five millimeters that sounds really like small but um yeah. like it's enough to like <laughs> i don't know it's enough to hurt yeah um, any yeah. any tear in a labrum is is going to be a problem you know um, yeah doesn't and matter it, how I mean, big a, lot of, a lot of people actually i was told a lot of people actually have like tears in their labrums it's just a matter if they're feeling the pain or not right yeah and i mean we're we're uh as uh, athletes we're, we're we're pushing the limits uh lifting you know weights that have maybe never been done before and so our bodies awesome. are going through it so um yeah i uh yeah that's all healed up uh can't recommend uh getting well i i don't know if i should recommend but prp worked very 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 good for me and just changing up um how i'm squatting so it's not aggravating the area and you know just over time when you continue training something you get stronger with it so that's yeah. kind of the point we're at right now and uh yeah i'm happy with it <laughs> yeah so so you get paid at sheffield for breaking these individual lift world records so we know total and squat there's that's like 10 grand right there um for amanda lawrence um how is bench going squat and deadlift squat bench deadlift yeah and then the overall prize and do you, do you also, oh, okay. Is there not a, uh, do you, do you also get five grand for like breaking the world record total? Let me oh, no. <laughs> nice. I actually okay, looked so at the, says, okay. So it says, uh, can you see this? Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it barely. It says, uh, Tell me. World record. So total prize fund. I think this is British pounds. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 365,000 British pounds. Potential maximum payout. Each athlete can win is 40,000 British pounds. Mm -hmm. World records on squat, bench, and deadlift are 5,000 British pounds each. So, okay. Um, you know, bench. Um, so, yeah, let's talk I about really, bench. I really, uh, I really don't want to butcher her name. Agata, 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 Chico Agata or, Chico. Yeah. So, I don't know how she benches what she benches, but I think, I think she set the world record at like 335 or 340 or something like that. Yeah, it's so, 147.5. Yeah, um, that's uh, that's just gonna be out of the question for this meet. Like, props to her. Like, she's a she's an anomaly. Um, <laughs> like I tried my best, but um, <laughs> so yeah, squat and deadlift. That's that's. How is big. how is your bench going though? Um, because it contributes bench, to the total. My yeah. bench is strong right now, and I there's gonna be no issues with competition depth for me. I think mm -hmm. maybe some of the other lifters. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. bench is feeling strong. I have been working very hard this off season since, since last June, since, uh, missing two, I missed two out of three benches because yeah. I have been dialing that in and we're going to make sure there's no issues with that. We're going to go three for three. We're going to maybe hit a small PR. Otherwise okay. I'll be happy with matching with what I've done in the past. Just, just so we're building the total and we're not missing attempts, right? Absolutely. So, but my squat and deadlifts are absolutely blowing up. So, I mean, that's where, that's where my strong suits are. Like my bench isn't like, my bench isn't bad. I mean, I'm yeah. still approaching that 300 pound mark in competition, which it, it's going to happen yeah. some, sometime. I don't know about this time, but it's going to happen. <laughs> That's um, awesome. That's good to hear. I don't, I don't have any intel on you on your bench. Cause that, cause yeah, I don't, you haven't posted too much bench. So don't I mean, reveal yeah. the secret. Go ahead. No, I posted a pretty fast 287 a couple of weeks ago on my story. So I mean, okay. if that gives you any idea, I mean, see, but, I got to start but, recording. I got to start screen recording your story so I can remember. Cause I see so much stuff on social media, you know, oh, like yeah. I'm that I'm like, I'm, I was, I'm forgetting things. So I need to like screenshot or something. So I have a record. And you said, oh. what was it in pounds that you hit? Uh, what is that? 130 kilo, which is a 286, 287. It was pretty okay. fast. So, I mean, I mean, 130 kilo. Yeah. I mean, your, your personal best is 132. Uh, so like my bench is up there right now and like my technique is dialed in with it. So I'm not going to be missing on a technical error. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's like, that's the main thing. I mean, I don't want to say we're coasting Ooh. on bench, but usually that's not like, yeah. I mean, I'd be very happy if I meet, if I match my personal best. Um, yeah. In the yeah. Week, so, of I mean, course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then talking deadlift. Um, so recently, so you're the, the world record is 260.5. That's your world record. Um, yeah. I saw you recently take this number and absolutely smoke it for a <laughs> single. Uh, that one I saw, I also saw a 240 by five 
which is crazy. That's only 20 kilos less than the world record. You're taking it for a, a set of five. So yeah. So tell us uh, if you want to reveal anything else about your deadlift. Um, you know, uh, my top end feels infinity right now. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, like I, I picked up 260, which is 573, which is like half a kilo under my world record. Like, yeah. I blew that up like that. Like I, that could yeah. be a second. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. I feel, I feel really confident that I can pull whatever I absolutely need to do to win. So, and that's a dangerous thing. Right. And, uh, and I know at the end of the day, I'm going to be the, the strong, the, the heaviest deadlift on that platform. I will make sure of that. <laughs> yeah. You'll be pulling last. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what, uh, that's yeah. So I'm just kind of, kind of set myself in a place where, you know, and, and, and most other meets I've done, I can pull for the win. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we start off strong with squats. I might not have the, you know, we'll gain some ground there. I mean, I might not have the strongest bench of all 84s that I've ever done, but it's still, yeah. still up there. I'm not, you know, I, I'm pretty well-rounded on all three lifts. So absolutely, um, that's what makes you dangerous. So yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I couldn't tell you what I, I think, I think we're approaching 600 territory that I'd be able to pull. Um, that's amazing. I don't know, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I guess you saw my top end deadlift that I hit in prep so far. So you can judge off of that. Okay. I mean, I, I was, uh, I hit 529 for a set of five a couple weeks ago. And then last week I hit 540 for uh, two sets of four. So, I mean, the reps are strong. So, and that's what makes my, my singles blow up. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, <laughs> I think you've said enough. You don't have to tell us anything else. I mean, uh, it's looking like, uh, maybe a 600 pound, that'd be a 272, um, which would be a world record. So you could actually tick that exact number if you wanted to, it looks like yeah, that's I mean, very much on the table. End of the day, we're going to pull what we need to win. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And, exactly. and up to that point, you know, all is fair game. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're definitely going to collect a chip on deadlift and squat and collect that 10 grand. Um, you know, for, for those as well. So that's huge. All right. Yeah. So, um, I don't want to keep you for too long. There's a couple more things I want to go through real quick because, you know, I heard you discuss it on your YouTube channel, but I, I, I want to make sure to get it out there just to kind of go over what happened at worlds. Um, so yeah. like you went three for three on squat, you, you had a 242.5 that moved really well. It looked like yeah. you had more in the tank. Oh, yeah. on I could have hit 250 that day. Yeah. But it looked I mean, like we had, we had to hold back for Sheffield here because obviously it's scored off of by how much you're able to break the world record by. So, exactly. um, yeah, I mean, in that sense, it, I wanted to do more that day, but I mean, yeah. it is, it is what it is. And, and I mean, basically like that 242.5 moved super easy for a third, like, like for a third, it looked like one of the easiest squats I've ever seen you do, um, for a third attempt. And I mean, then we go into bench you know, and, and here's the thing. So after squat, you're three for three, uh, or, you know, on squat, you're three for three after squat, you only made three lifts after that. And you still won the world title by 35 kilos. That's like a yeah. ton. That's a huge gap. So obviously you were probably expecting, like you said, you're holding back a little bit on squat. You're not expecting that you're going to miss two benches, which if you hit those two benches, you're going to go on and win best lifter, be able to pull what, put whatever you need on the bar on the third attempt deadlift. Yeah to win best lifter, but tell us what happened about, you know, with those benches and then how you kind of like dealt with it mentally. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's tough missing on a technical air and mm -hmm. going, end up going one for three on bench. You know, I got a lot of flack after that, after the meets, as if I'm not already hard enough on myself, you know, yeah. um, you know, some, sometimes people don't understand that us athletes work, work people too. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're not machines. And, and you're I a human mean, being. I can contest. Yeah, I can attest. And, <laughs> thanks. And, you know, and I've, uh, we've had a long off season. I've had a lot of time to, you know, work on some of the weaknesses that I may have. So we can make sure that this next meet that doesn't happen again. So mm -hmm. I guess is all I can say on that. I guess going into deadlifts, then if, if the ultimate goal that meet was to try to still hit best lifter without pushing the world record total, because I mean, yeah, Sheffield yeah. coming up, um, it kind of like, made things a little bit hard um because then we were gonna have to break the the world record deadlift i i can't remember the exact number that i was having to pull but um hindsight 2020 i'm glad i missed that third deadlift so i didn't push the world record even higher um yeah. it kind of you know after the fact kind of sucks i don't i was trying to go for that repeat for hitting best lifter you know um three years in a row but you know 
shit happens. Shit happens. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it kind of stung being handed a second place trophy. Uh, but mm. you know, congrats to Tiffany. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was enough off thing for me it just goes to show anything can happen me day i mean myself and and not to mention other people that's something people have to like understand when they're when they're uh when we're going into these meets and you know basing uh people's numbers off of their training you anything can happen you know Absolutely. there's there's depth calls there's uh for both squat and bench there's you know lockouts is, is gripping you know good are you waiting for the rack man like all this so yeah. Um, you know, it's just who, who's going to show up and hit nine for nine. But I mean, at the end of the day, like these mistakes like that aren't going to happen in my next meet. And I've had a lot of time to ensure that. So, yeah. um, yeah. And I've done as much as I possibly can to try to show up the strongest package as possible. So, yeah, um, the third, the third deadlift was 263 that you ended up in. That would have been a world record, uh, yeah. deadlift that we were talking about there. I mean, and like you say, hindsight's 2020, you can always go back and dissect like, Hey, if I would have got another like two and a half or five on squat. And then if I would have just got my second bench, boom, you win best lifter. I mean, simple yeah. as that, you know, and not yeah. have to pull, not have to pull a world record on your third deadlift. Boom. I mean, so there was a path, a very, I wouldn't say easy because nothing you do, you make it look easy, but nothing you do is really easy, but, um, that you could have handily won that best lifter award. I mean, I just did before this, a bunch of calculations and stuff, and you only needed a little bit more, um, like 11 kilos more, exactly. which like you said, you probably could have got 11 kilos on squat. I definitely yeah. could have between that and, and getting a couple bench attempts in. So it is what it is. Like you said, hindsight's 2020. I hope that, you know, the silver lining is like it lit a fire under you, uh, yeah. to like get your bench in order and to make sure that like when the, you know, the next meet comes around, you're going to go three for three and build your total. Yeah. Like you said, with your bench, um, and you know, have a kick-ass meet on, on going forward. I mean, look, talking about worlds, you're undefeated at worlds. You're three for three. You've never lost a world championship before yeah. you've won every world champion you've been to. You wanted obviously to get that best lifter. That was like icing on the cake, but Hey, let's go get it. The next three worlds. You know what exactly. I mean? Like, yeah, and, people, and, some, and sometimes like, you know, people seem to forget, like most of the time when athletes are going into a world championship, they're just trying to win their weight class. Like yeah. for me, it's just kind of like, it's just like sloughed off. Like, Oh, she's yeah. got it. And like, like, and if it's just a given. And so it's just like, I'm just trying to, you know, there's gotta be something that keeps me like grinding and wanting to be here. So for me, that's yeah. winning the overall title. Um, and I guess I'm not one to make excuses, but I am excited that Sheffield is maybe like time-wise a, a little bit closer to the afternoon. I tend, I tend to be the only, um, the 84th and 84 plus we usually get at the world championships. We're the only like prime time that's in the morning. Okay. That has to compete. Everyone else is at night. That's most ideal if you ask me. So, okay. um, whether that had a factor, I would say yes for me, because like, I just, I did not have the energy going into that, into that deadlift, but, um, yeah. you know, I'm not going to make excuses. That's on me. Um, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm excited that maybe it's at in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, like I said too, it's like, you, you're still young you got plenty. Of, you could, you've got time to, to four Pete, five Pete, um, as far as, uh, yeah. best lifter at worlds, there's plenty of time out there in the future for that. Exactly. So don't, exactly. nothing to sweat over it. I mean, and then, so do you mostly train? in the evenings then. And that's why you kind of feel good, like having a later start session at meets. Uh, afternoon for sure okay. would be, yeah. Afternoon. <laughs> I'm not usually like, let's go, you know, let's go hit a massive, uh, you know, squat or deadlift in the morning. It's just not mm -hmm. <laughs> this <laughs> year. Know, it's just, you know, my clock. Yeah. This year at nationals, I believe the, uh, the final session that included the 84s, 84 plus and, um, the one twenties and the one twenty plus at nationals was started, I think at noon, but I'll make a mental note. We want Amanda in prime time, like real prime time in the afternoon when yeah, she's in her, when every, she's in her prime, every other weight class, like, well, just speaking of the world championship, the last one, like everyone else got to be at night. And I don't know. It's just yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. That last day, how it gets condensed, but I don't know, but it, it is what it is. So I want to go through some quick hitters here to kind of let people get to know you a little bit. The first one's a little more of a deep thought thing, which is just what does it mean to you to represent the United States? And when you hear that national anthem and knowing that like they're playing that national anthem because of what you did on the platform, um, what, what is that feeling like for, for all of us mortals that don't get to experience it? I don't even know like how to put into words. It's, 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 a, it's the greatest honor that, that I could possibly have. 
like being on the stage, I think, yeah, yeah, being on the stage, just hearing the national anthem, it honestly kind of puts like tears in my eyes. Um, me too. And it's like, I just can't believe it's playing it. They're playing it for me. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, yeah. I, uh, it's, it's, it's the greatest honor. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Wouldn't, I wouldn't trade anything, anything else for it. So. Yeah, I loved watching you. Uh, I mean, all of our lifters, um, every time the national anthem gets up there and you've got your tracks, you know, Team USA suit on and everything. It's just, it's, we all get goosebumps and teary eyed and stuff like that. So, yeah. and is your mom like in South Africa, was your mom in the crowd watching that? No, she was back there coaching. In the warm up room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, she's my sidekick. <laughs> so I call her mom. Mama Kelly, MK. <laughs> MK, Mama Kelly. And Kelly is her first name then. Yes. All right. What's your biggest motivation to succeed? Um, Another wow. tough I one. I mean, like, <laughs> this is a deep question. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I guess we can just like go back to like when I first started powerlifting. I, uh, I mean, I kind of like started at this out as a hobby. It was, it was kind of like my getaway. Like when I was in college, I mean, I was, I have a bachelor's degree in biomedical science. So, I mean, I was going pre-med at the time and like I graduated with that degree and it was tough classes. And I kind of used lifting as like my outlet. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Cause like it's stressful. Right. And I just kind of realized that, you know, I was posting on Instagram kind of just to keep track of my own progress. And it was kind of like, I don't know, a lifting diary for me. And it kind of quickly turned into this source of, um, as the page grew, as a source of inspiration for, for especially other women to yeah. um, get into lifting. And I like to think that I've been a huge um, part of that in the last, just was counting this today, seven years I've been in, in the powerlifting industry, um, just like helping to, you know, break the stamina that, you know, women aren't, don't have to look a certain way if if they're yeah. if they're powerful you're not going to look like a man you know you can be strong and still look feminine and and it's fun and it's something that you know will keep you going back into the gym and being consistent and because that's the main thing that like matters um i remember back in the day when i wasn't powerlifting when i was just going to the gym for like the the per sole purpose of losing weight it's just it, it, it was going to be kind of like a toxic kind of thing and i couldn't and i couldn't um, maintain it and, yeah. you know, it was inconsistent need to just, um, well, long story short, I keep doing it for the people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At this point it's, it's, um, you know, I've won, like you said, three world, three world titles, um, in the 84 kilo class, you know, two years, best lifter. And that's what I keep striving for, for that, to keep me, to, to keep me going. Cause I mean, there's only, there's only so like squat bench and deadlift. There's only like so much to it. Right. Um, it's yeah. the people that keep me in the sport, you know, that you surround yourself with. And also like, uh, that, that I meet, you know, every day and, um, it just, it, it just puts a smile on my face and, uh, I love seeing the sport grow. So, well, um, I can attest you've been a huge inspiration for a lot of people, including myself and, um, keeping me consistent and getting in the weight room and inspire me to even get in powerlifting at all. So, um, not just women out there, but you're a role well, yeah. model for all I mean, of us. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean. I, yeah. I, uh, I meant everybody, but especially on the women's side as women are really, are really holding up powerlifting right now. We're getting, we're getting the views. I mean, I 100%. mean, I just, I'm proud. I'm proud of it is what I'm trying to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. And you're <laughs> an amazing role model for women and men is all, uh, you know, across the board. So that's, it's great. Um, so some quick hitters, where'd you grow up? Uh, born and raised in Minnesota. Where, what, the accent. what city? Minneapolis? Uh, about, uh, maybe like an hour North North. Okay. So where it's real cold then, um, and what I, was... mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of winter right now. We're, yeah. we're just around the corner of it. Um, you're like a yeah. block away from the North pole. Um, but <laughs> not was... as cold as like Jessica, like we're, she yeah, was... yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's in a cold part of the country too. Yep. Um, what was your first sport that you played growing up? Um, well, I mean, if we're taking it way back, like I was a dancer, but I, I don't, okay. I just think <laughs> I, yeah. I dabbled in dance. I dabbled in volleyball. Didn't work out either one of those, but my main sports were soccer and oh. basketball. Um, wow. I was actually supposed to play college soccer. Um, and it's uh, probably good that I ended up not, I, I fractured my tibia 
So I, I had to back out of it. So I kind of found powerlifting through that. <laughs> um, thank God you fractured yeah, that tibia. Thank God for all of us. <laughs> um, amazing how there's always this like silver lining or this bright spot. I mean, I'm sure at the time you, it was like heartbreaking. Um, and then now looking back, we're like, you can laugh about it and say like, thank goodness I broke my tibia. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Yeah. That running is overrated anyway. Oh yeah. It's so hard on you. I tell people it's not, it's not good for you. Um, <laughs> no, especially, especially like, cause there's a point in time in my career where I was trying to be before yeah. my first world championships, but I was trying to be good at both running and lifting. And yeah. let me tell you, once you have like muscle packed on, like, like I ran the half mile with my dog the other year. And like, I got it band syndrome from that. Like, yeah. like it just doesn't work. It's like muscle no. and concrete, just like rock. Pounding. Exactly. It's bad for you. <laughs> it's bad for your joints and stuff. Um, it's good for the yeah. heart and everything, but there's other ways to get cardio where you oh, don't have to yeah. impact, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. So when you're, when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? Like if you could take a weekend off from real life and just do whatever you want, what would you do? I'm on the lake. That's for sure. Um, okay. <laughs> last year, uh, Kelvin and I just bought some lake property we're developing and um, building on cool. it this year. So um, that's been what's been taking up a lot of my time. Well, when there's not snow on the ground, um, yeah. we're, we're going, we're going Paul Bunyan lumberjack mode, you know? Um, but, yeah, <laughs> I can relate. I'm on, my, I'm on my pond too. That's, that's an ideal day. <laughs> uh, do you guys do anything on the lake in the winter? You guys go ice fishing or any of that kind of stuff? Uh, we will, but not right. Well, like I said, we're, I mean, it was, it was bare land. We just bought, we're clearing it out this last year. And now we're building, cool. putting up the building this year. Um, That's yeah, exciting. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit, a couple of years since I've been fishing. It's always like, uh, every time you got to touch the fish for the first time, but I'm the same way. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like but it. But after the first one, it's okay. You know? Um, I, I don't mind sitting there and like having a beer and hanging out and stuff, but I don't like to like actually handle the fish or, or anything <laughs> like that. I don't like to even touch the fishing poles. I'm, I don't want to touch a hook. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just like eating the fish after probably. Exactly. And I just like eating snacks and, and having a beer and bullshitting for a couple hours, you know, that's, that's, the fun what, part. that's spend what time. Do guys fishing. Yeah. yeah. Spend time with the family and stuff. Um, okay. Do you prefer mountains or beaches or neither? Uh, beaches. Cause I mean, beaches. honestly, like I'm in the snow, like <laughs> half of the year, every year, it, it, shit gets old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you have any nicknames that we don't know about? Like uh, what's your family call you? Well, that's where my Instagram username kind of came from at first. Like wasn't, I was always called Miss and Ann. Ann as okay. Well. So that is your actual real nickname. Yeah. And it like that, like that was my username, like before I was lifting and like kind of just like the page turned into lifting and Stuck with I it. just kind of kept it. And it's just, it, I don't know. I thought about changing at one point, but it just kind of, okay, that's what it is. <laughs> All right. What's, what's your favorite sport to watch? Uh, I like watching football a lot, but you know, sadly the Vikings were really disappointing to watch this year. <laughs> Hey, they had Kirk, Kirk Duggins for a minute. He was on top of the world. Um, like, yeah. Like, how did we like seriously lose like the first playoff game? Like, like we went so uh, far, but yeah, uh, it's, I, it's hard to be a Minnesota Vikings fan, but I really like watching football. But Vikings, that's your favorite football team. Okay. I mean, it's not, I mean, that's my home team. I mean, you it's hard to. to not cheer for your home. It just feels kind of weird when you're cheering for another team, you know? I mean, obviously once we're kicked out, I do. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, <laughs> I, my, my hometown, my, my house is two and a half hours from Arrowhead stadium, Kansas city chiefs all the way. My whole oh, life. Man. I'm, That's what I was I'm, rooting for. I'm old. So I went through a period of my life where like, they didn't even make playoff games for the longest time. They were terrible. They were one of the worst teams in the league forever. So now it's like, we finally get our, our time to shine with yeah. Mahomes, and Mahomes, man, you got, man. <laughs> Amazing. Right. <laughs> Yes, All right. I'll just have a couple quick, a couple more and we'll, I'll let you go. Um, what's your yeah. favorite music, music genre? See, like, this is not a great question for me. Cause I just, I like every, I like everything, but, and, and, and don't hate me, but I don't mm -hmm. like the like heavy metal music. Sometimes that's played, that's been played at powerlifting meets in the past. Yes. <laughs> so I don't like, either. Okay, so like training, like I'll listen to hip hop, rap, classic rock. Um, you know, when I'm on my, when I'm on the lake, I'm on my pontoon, I like to listen to country. I just, uh, <laughs> I like, <laughs> I, I don't love know. It. I, 
EDM I really like for like maybe yeah. like a heavy top set. Um, Who's your favorite I, rapper? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> if you had a name, you can name a couple if you want, but. Uh, I mean, I like Drake. I like, I like Cardi B. I like, I mean, I mean, I like, I like, I like some of Kanye's old music. I mean, I, yeah, like, yeah. I like a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, okay, good. What is it? Okay. Young Thug? I can't, I don't even know all their names. There's so many. Okay, cool. That's a good, that's a great list right there. I like all those as well. So, okay, so okay. I know, I know the playlist that we could like, you know, at least oh, uh, have some things in I common. See what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I got to put together my Sheffield playlist still, by the way. And I don't <laughs> mind like, like, I think it was really funny how you mentioned like, uh, if you're on the lake, you might listen to country. Like I pretty much will never listen to country except when I'm hanging out, like with my stepdad out in the country, yeah, like in rural yeah. Nebraska, like then it's like just fitting for the scene. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and like, be honest. Okay. So are you, are you, well, do you like listening to the songs that you listen to in the gym outside of the gym? I do actually. I listen you to do. rap. I just rap 24 seven. So it's just a matter of like, I have like a 500 long playlist that just okay. is on repeat. Like rap caviar. Got it. And then, um. <laughs> and then, and then I like, I like, uh, other types of music outside of the gym though. Like, like I would never listen to jazz in the gym or blues or anything like that. But oh, yeah. I do listen, I do listen to that. Like in, when I'm like doing work and stuff on my computer. Yeah. It's more relaxing. Yeah. yeah. See, I just like, I'm the type of person that play it, that if I find a song I like in the gym, I'll play it over and over and over. And then I yeah. just get sick of the song. Yeah. But I can't listen to that. Like heavy upbeat stuff outside of the gym. Cause like, I don't yeah. know. I, I get three hours of it, like on the day. So it's yeah. just two yeah. hours. So it's like, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> That's a good point. I do listen to like a lot of podcast stuff like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Last thing is, uh, oh, okay. Two more. What kind of movies do you like? What kind of genre of movies? Um, I really like, uh, like the Marvel universe watching that kind of thing. Otherwise, if we're not talking that, I mean, uh, I like comedies. I'm not a big like horror movie type of person. Cause I'm just okay. scared. Um, <laughs> is there any kind of, is there any kind of conflict with you and Calvin on what type of movies you guys like to watch? Calvin watches everything. And you know, what's the frustrating part about it. He's seen every movie. But but he doesn't he doesn't have a problem rewatching stuff I guess but it's just it's frustrating. I don't like um, that either. If my wife has seen it, I'm like, no, I'm not watching it. I don't. I'll watch yeah. it on my own someday when I never do. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, no, there's not usually conflict. He'll watch anything. And, I mean, as long as it's not like a scary movie, like I, or those gory movies, I just mm -hmm. I just don't want to see it. Gotcha. And he's into watching anything you're into. That's good. Yeah, it's good. You guys got a good relationship. What's uh What's your go to nice restaurant order? Like if you go out to a nice restaurant, what are you trying to eat? Um, so I'm big on like a, like a good steak or I love I love pasta. Okay. I can't pick between the two. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Sheffield people, you know, when it's all over with and she's celebrating her dub, make sure you get her a good steak or some pasta or maybe steak and pasta. <laughs> and what's your <laughs> what's your like uh fast food go to fast food craving if you if you ever eat fast food? Um. You know, <laughs> I, I really like Jersey Mike's. They're like, they're Italian club or whatever it's called. Do you have Jersey Mike's in your area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. Yeah, yeah. I like Jersey Mike's. It's one of my favorites. Otherwise, I mean, you can't go wrong with Dairy Queen. <laughs> oh, nice. Dairy Queen. That's a Midwest thing for sure. Yeah. And do you, do you drink alcohol? Do you ever have like a, and what's your go-to like drink of adult drink of choice? Um, you know, honestly, I've never been a big drinker and it's mm -hmm. just, I, I just, I don't like the taste of beer. I also don't like the taste of coffee. So there's that, uh -huh. but, um, I mean, like if I had to take a drink, like it would be like probably a pineapple coconut mojito. Oh, something hello. where it's like enough, where it's enough, like, yeah. you know, tropical or I don't taste the, the ick. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> beach, beach vibes that goes along yeah. with boating and beach time and stuff like that. Maybe a Malta afterwards you know, yeah, yeah, on the beach go. somewhere, get you that pineapple mo oh, you gotta oh, mojito. You gotta qualify first and then, and then we'll talk. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. You're going to qualify. We're, we're good. We'll knock on wood. We don't want to tempt the gods, but yeah. yes. <laughs> All right, Amanda. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time. Um, it's amazing talking to you. I, I'm like so excited for you. You seem so happy and you seem like you're on one right now, as far as your training and stuff, you're about to set the world on fire and remind yeah. everyone who Amanda Lawrence is. Yeah. And, uh, Jeez, um, don't forget. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Paul. I really appreciate you having me on. This was, this was a fun, fun podcast. Yeah. So. Now, are there any sponsors, anyone you want to thank before we wrap it? 
Uh, yeah, of course, full SPD. I mean, they're the one who is making this all possible and they've been yeah. supporting me from day one. So, and then uh, secondly, I guess uh, I'll shout out BPN Subs, my supplement sponsor, um, big support there. Um, and then I guess I'll, I also want to thank my Flex family, shout out to them. Um, you know, for, I couldn't do this without a team behind me. So um, yeah. we're going to be bringing it, like I said, in a couple of weeks here. So yeah, and to all the fans. Thanks for listening and for always being there. And uh, you guys keep me going and, uh, you know, keep raising the bar. <laughs> well, you keep us going. You're an inspiration to us all. Uh, we love you and you're the queen. And so anytime you want to come back on, let me know. Um, definitely do a recap or something after Sheffield. After and Sheffield. Going yeah, into Malta really. and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. But um, say hi to Mama Kelly and Calvin and everyone and yep. Chloe and everything. And have a great rest of your day. Oh, well, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, with that, uh, that's been the Power of Teen America podcast with the queen, Miss Amanda Ann. And with that, <laughs> peace out.